I'll be completely honest with you guys, I love making videos like this, a video where I can rank NBA players in a specific order and have you guys tell me what you think. And in this video, we're going to be doing exactly that. We are going to be looking at the players that are currently in Orlando in the NBA bubble and ranking them in the top 30. As I make this video, the 22 teams that are currently in the bubble have played about 3 games. And because of these games being played, I have a rough idea who my top 30 are in the NBA bubble. So one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that before I get into the list, I just want you guys to know that this is my personal opinion. And of course, you guys have your own opinions as well, which is why I want you guys to let me know your differences in the comment section down below. This list will be very different from the usual top 30 best players in the whole NBA because players like Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, Carl Anthony Towns, Draymond Green, D'Angelo Russell, Trey Young, they're not in the NBA bubble right now and don't have a shot on my list in this video. And some players that should have played in the bubble such as Bradley Beal, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and DeMontes Sabonis, they're supposed to be playing in the bubble but due to their own specific reasons, they're not. So they won't be on this list as well. So if you're a big basketball fan and love rankings, this is the perfect video for you. But before I get into the video, I just want to say, if you're new to the channel and love basketball, welcome to Easy Buckets guys. My name is Soom and I make basketball videos on a daily and consistent basis. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications to not miss any of my upcoming videos. We are currently on the road to 40,000 subscribers guys. So if this video can get to 100 likes in the first 24 hours, I would greatly appreciate it. But without wasting any more time, we're going straight into ranking the top 30 players in the NBA bubble today. Before I get into the 30, I just want to mention a few players that just missed the cut and are around that 31st, 32nd, and 33 mark. Nikola Vucevic will not be in the top 30, but he's definitely worth a shot as he's leading the Orlando Magic to a playoff run right now. Lou Williams of the Los Angeles Clippers is also a viable option in the top 30, but due to his recent actions of leaving the bubble and not being a main option for the Clippers anymore with Kawhi and Paul George there, he is not on the list. Tobias Harris is also a main scorer and focal point for the 76ers, but he won't be on the list, and of course Alex Caruso just misses the cut. So now, let's start off with the actual list. At number 30, we got Fred Van Vliet. Fred has been great this year, being an NBA champion and shifting to the starting point guard position for the Toronto Raptors, he has definitely improved and is definitely in the conversation of most improved player. Shai Gilgis Alexander, a prime time factor to why OKC is such a great team and that's why he is on this top 30 list at the 29 mark. Ja Morant of the Memphis Grizzlies guys, being a rookie and the most likely player to win rookie of the year, Ja Morant is playing great basketball, becoming the leader for the Grizzlies and also is leading them to a playoff push right now. CJ McCollum, the second option on the Portland Trailblazers, it's sad to say that he'll always be a second option when playing alongside Damian Lillard, but that's why he's always in the top 30 mark, but no higher than the 20 mark. So that's why CJ McCollum is always around this 27 to 25 mark. Drew Holiday, a very underrated player in the NBA, but known to be one of the best defenders in the NBA, is currently helping the Pelicans make a strong playoff push for the 8th spot in the Western Conference. The 25th player is Kristaps Porzingis, guys. He currently just came off a big ACL injury and is playing great basketball as the number two option on the Dallas Mavericks. He's putting up career highs in points, rebounds, and blocks right now and is a focal point to why Dallas is in the playoffs and securing that seventh seed. At number 24, we got Bam Adebayo, who is most likely to win most improved player this year. Being a backup center last year behind Hassan Whiteside, he has shifted to that starting guard position, being a first time all-star this year and also leading the Miami Heat to the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. Donovan Mitchell, a young all-star in the NBA, is going to do amazing things in the NBA as he keeps continuing to grow and right now helping the Utah Jazz secure the fourth or third seed in the Western Conference as their prime time playmaker and go-to scorer. At number 22, we got Brandon Ingram, guys. In my personal opinion, I believe Brandon Ingram is going to be a top 20 player in the NBA very soon. And after being traded from the Lakers to the Pelicans, he has literally became the go-to scorer for the Pelicans. And we're going to see wonderful things from him if the Pelicans do make the playoffs. 
At number 21, we got Devin Booker, guys. I know a lot of you guys out there love Devin Booker. He is going to be a top 15 player of the NBA one day. But to get there, he needs to make the Suns better and make them make the playoffs for the first time in his career. And right now, in this NBA bubble, he has a chance to do that. And if they keep winning, it's just going to make his name better. At number 20, we got Chris Middleton, guys. A lot of you guys out there are saying that Chris Middleton is overrated or underrated. It is literally a two-way conversation. But in my opinion, Chris Middleton is a very important factor offensively and defensively to the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's why I believe he deserves a top 20 in this list. Kemba Walker is going to be at the 19th mark, guys. The reason why Kemba Walker is so low is only because right now he is injured and not really helping the Boston Celtics in his NBA bubble. But if he is healthy, he could potentially be a top 15 player in the NBA bubble. And right now, there is other Boston Celtics player that are better than him. At number 18, we got Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz. He's not the go-to scorer on the Utah Jazz, but he is the go-to primetime defensive stopper and their defensive anchor. He is most likely to win Defensive Player of the Year this year. And of course, you can see how impactful he is when he's on the floor. The Utah Jazz are a top four seed in the tough competition of the Western Conference. At number 17, we got Ben Simmons, guys, the player that cannot shoot, but is an all-around player, an all-around threat, and could potentially be a top 10 player in the NBA if he does develop a shot. Right now, the 76ers are trying to advance in the Eastern Conference to go as high as possible as they don't want to face the Boston Celtics in the first round of the playoffs. And that's why Ben Simmons is going to have to play the best basketball of his career to get that opportunity. At number 16, we got NBA champion Kyle Lowry as right now he is leading the Toronto Raptors to the second seed in the Eastern Conference. And as I make this video, they are on a three game winning streak in the NBA bubble and it shows no signs of stopping and could potentially push for the NBA Finals. At number 15, we got Chris Paul, guys, an NBA veteran in the NBA, previously a top 10 player. But due to his age, his game has declined. But I've got some good news for CB3 fans because this year, he's helping OKC, who was a team that was not even projected to be a playoff team. They're in the playoffs right now, fighting for the 6th, 5th, or 4th spot in the Western Conference. And with Chris Paul's leadership and versatility, he is literally the floor general and the captain of that young squad. At number 14, we got Jason Tatum, one of the rising superstars in the NBA right now. He has literally, literally improved into an all-star player. Last year, only averaging about 15 points per game. To this year, about 24 points per game. Jason Tatum has become the go-to option for the Boston Celtics. At number 13, we got Jimmy Butler, or you can call him Jimmy Buckets, guys. He is a threat both offensively and defensively, and is currently the captain of the strong world Miami Heat, who is actually projected to potentially even make the NBA Eastern Conference Finals. If Butler is hitting his shots and being a great playmaker and an all-around threat, the Miami Heat could be dangerous. At number 12, we got first-time All-Star Pascal Siakam and also an NBA champion as well. Pascal Siakam has literally improved into a blossom star for the Toronto Raptors ever since Kawhi left. Pascal has stepped up into that go-to scoring option for the team, being their power forward, could even stretch it up to the small forward. Pascal Siakam is going to be great, and the crazy fact is that he's so young in the NBA, he's under 25, and is a big factor to why the Toronto Raptors are currently second in the East. At number 11, we got Russell Westbrook, guys, who is currently James Harden's partner and his shadow. Russell Westbrook is an all-around threat. I know right now the Houston Rockets are playing a small ball type of lineup where all of the starting lineup players are not taller than 6'7". And with Russell Westbrook being athletic and an all-around threat on the boards, he is basically their center on that team. Russell Westbrook would definitely be higher on this list if he was not James Harden's shadow. At number 10, we got PG-13, Paul George of Los Angeles Clippers, guys. So I'm unsure if Paul George can be consistent in his NBA bubble and the NBA playoffs coming up. But if Paul George could be consistent, be a dominant player like he was last year on OKC, he could potentially be a top 7 in this list. At number 9, we got Nikola Jokic, guys, the center playmaker who is literally an all-around threat on every aspect. He can play make, he can rebound, he can play defense, but also being so young in the NBA, he's become the captain of the Denver Nuggets who are right now third in the Western Conference. At number eight, we got Joel Embiid, guys. A lot of you guys out there will be saying that Joel Embiid should be higher, but the reason why I'm putting him a little bit lower than usual is only because the 76ers are not playing to the best of their potential. They were actually projected to be a top two seed in the Eastern Conference, but this year, they're only six which is definitely a letdown. So if MB was played at the best of his game, he'll definitely be higher. 
At number seven, we got MVP candidate Luka Doncic, who is currently the all-around threat, the playmaker, the LeBron James kind of player for the Dallas Mavericks right now. He is currently leading the Dallas Mavericks to a bright future as this guy could potentially be the face of the NBA one day. At number six, we got Damian Lillard, guys. In my opinion, I believe Damian Lillard deserves to be at that sixth spot right now in the NBA bubble. He's currently the best point guard in the NBA bubble, in my opinion. And right now, the Blazers are fighting really hard for that eighth spot in the Western Conference. And I believe they will get the eighth spot. And we would love to see a Damian Lillard versus the LA Lakers first round. But yeah, guys, this wraps up my video today on the top 30 players in the NBA bubble today. Oh wait, some of you guys out there are probably thinking, where is my top 5 on this list? You see, this is where you come in. I want you guys to rank the top 5 players in your opinion in the NBA bubble in the correct order and I will check the comments and see if that is exactly like my top 5. I just wanted to add a little fun to my videos and I believe this would be perfect. So yes, this does wrap up my video. I'll be looking forward to reading some of your comments on the top five players in the NBA bubble. But other than that, take it easy, God bless, and I'll definitely see you all next time on Easy Buckets. Woo!